So here it is guys. This is what uh, this is what had to be replaced. This is the tracking knob. This is the tracking it's a switch. This is an actual switch. Um, so if you are desoldering one um, don't worry about applying too much heat the what you have to worry about is when you're soldering it back in the key is to make sure that you don't put the soldering iron on it for more than uh, two seconds because if you put too much heat you can damage the new one so just be careful if you're needing to um, replace this and this is this is a lot of the problem with uh, Sanyo's when they won't track right and you'll you'll know it's bad because when you turn it it doesn't seem to do anything and this is exactly what's wrong um, that's what we replaced in the uh, black one the 4027 is what this is. Let's see if you guys can try to see it show it up close but um so yeah that's that's what I that is what we replaced on this uh, super beta. This is not a hi-fi but it does have super beta and it does play back uh, not only beta 1 it will also play back uh, Beta 1S. Now, I don't have any uh, Beta 1 tapes. I have Beta 1 tapes, but they're uh, either Beta 1S or they're Beta 1 Super High Band. Uh, most of my tapes are recorded in the uh, Beta 1S. So, it was pretty cool to... Uh, I just thought, you know what, I'm going to throw it in this machine just to to see if it'll play it and I didn't expect it to play it but it did uh, so apparently these two models 4020 and the 4027 also the 4010 those models will play back uh, beta 1 now now the uh, 4020 and the 4010 Sanyo they will play back beta 1. They will not play beta 1S, but the 4027 will. So if it's a super beta, a 4027, um, I don't know if the uh, 7250, I think the 7250 was the super beta with hi fi stereo that Samuel had. But I'm not really sure. I don't remember. <laughs> everything sometimes I've been moving and stuff around and so there's my little you know it's setting things up and you know got my a lot of my beta tapes are over on the on the shelf here and my laser discs down on the bottom I probably got maybe 30 40 40 laser discs all together and and uh, I do have a lot more um, coming but oh. I'm a huge laser disc fan. Um, if you guys, my old channel, which was taken down, um, you guys will know that if you have followed my channel uh, for any length of time, you know that the, the two things that I love are Betamax and laser disc because those are the things that I grew up with and those are the things that I love. Um, didn't have Betamax, we had VHS, but I remember Betamax, and, uh, I loved it. Loved the format, so. Um, and, and now, you know, within the last few, probably within the last eight years, I've gotten into the, to the beta format, and have really just kind of enjoyed um, experiencing that, uh, yeah, Sony was telling the truth. Um, they did have better picture quality. Now, uh, 
you can't go out and buy um, um, a beta tape, a pre-recorded movie on beta because it's deteriorated. So when you're playing it back up against the VHS, they're going to look the same. They're deteriorating. So in order to get an accurate an accurate opinion on the beta format is to buy new old stock tapes buy a new old stock tape okay and record off of a DVD record off the cable TV or the satellite TV then record onto a VHS tape and then do your comparison and you'll find that the beta is a little bit sharper but um not not by a whole lot but you can tell a difference but the super beta that was where uh the format shined the super beta was what really uh stood out and that's what really took um jvc by surprise and they were kind of for a short time, um, beta sales were increasing a little bit when they introduced Super Beta. So then VHS introduced SVHS, and then, well, we all know that beta failed. But uh, I love the format, and uh, always will. And, uh, you know, laser discs, uh, they're my pride and Pride and joy as well. I've got a Magnavox uh, laser disc player down. I've got a Pioneer. Uh, we'll do a review on this uh, Sony Super VHS. It's uh, SLV R5UC. We'll we'll take a look at that too. So, but these are some things that are are coming up, and I thought you guys might like to see. You know, my setup. I'm still not set up. I still got tapes everywhere and I've got boxes everywhere because I'm still in the process of moving everything and uh, let me show you I got a tape here uh, this is a tape that's black it's a new one it's new old stock new old stock that's what I buy I buy these new old stock this was from the real early 80s so this was, uh, you know, Fuji. They make pretty good stuff. I actually recommend them, but not the new Fuji. Uh, I don't know why, but after after the after the 90s, Fuji tape had a problem with uh, sticking to itself. So here's my room, and uh, we'll. Uh, you know, it's turning into a, a studio slash repair. So I'm going to be repairing in this room. I'm going to be doing uh, reviews in this room. I'm going to be doing studio, doing transfers for people. Uh, now that I have a place to, to do it, uh, living in the motorhome was very tough the last five years. It was very tough and... My YouTube channel wasn't taking off like I wanted it to, and that's mainly because I think because I lived in a motorhome and didn't have a lot of space, and I lived where you know with a lower class people. Uh, you know, when you're living in an RV, you're 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 getting into some of the. I hate to say this, but not everybody lives in an RV that's scum. But there's a lot of scummy, druggy people that are drug addicts, alcoholics. Scummy people live in RVs. Okay, and I'm not saying that all people are that way, but that's the pretty much the kind of environment that you're getting into when you move into an RV because you have to, because I have to. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.